coming up on this week's edition of the SKNS Week in Review. St. Kitts and Nevis pledges 2.5 million to aid the recovery efforts of neighboring countries. Six police officers deployed to Dominica and Foreign Affairs Minister Mark Brantley addresses the United Nations. Those stories and more are next on the SKNIS Week in Review for the period September 23 to 28, 2017. Hello and welcome, I'm Ian Richards. The government of St. Kitts and Nevis has stepped forward to render assistance to neighboring countries that were devastated by Hurricane Irma and Maria, which tore through the region this month, causing death and destruction. During a televised address on Saturday, Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris announced that the Cabinet approved a total of $2.5 million to be donated to affected islands. Dominica, Cabinet has approved $1 million to Dominica to the British Virgin Islands. We have approved an amount of $500,000 of support to Anguilla $400,000 to Antigua $400,000 and to St. Martin $200,000. The relief efforts in Dominica will also benefit from the presence of six members of the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force who left the Federation on Tuesday. The men will be included as part of the mission being undertaken by the Regional Security System or RSS. Corporal Ray Farrell is the leader of the group. We were training disaster management, also evacuation, and a lot of training as part of RSS, going to basic advanced patrols and a lot of different training. So we mostly go there to help out with the situation and see what best we can do. The other team members are Constables Jerry Clark, Shane Christmas, Chad Coffey, Lowell Wallace, and Antonio Brown. The five men are nationals of Dominica. Constable Brown said that he has had no contact with family members since the storm. We're going to assist and we'll do the best that we can do to help save lives in whatever way we could help. I haven't been in contact with my family in the area that I am from. If I could expect anything, I have prepared my mind to see that my home might be damaged badly. We wish them all the best. Back at home now, officials of the local Red Cross are encouraging residents and citizens in St. Kitts and Nevis to develop a family disaster plan as the end of the 2017 Atlantic hurricane season is still more than two months away. On Wednesday, Director General of the St. Kitts and Nevis Red Cross, Natalie Fo, advocated for the emergency measure. Every person in the house should have their own choice. You know a hurricane don't come overnight. You know it's coming two, three days ahead. Therefore, this person will be the person who maybe make sure that all the, the things outside, the chairs and everything that might fly away, those things are secured. Next, somebody, somebody else will be in, um, tasked with ensuring the gas line, the gas is turned off based on where it is. If it is out of the elements, make sure it's turned off. So everybody should have their chores to do. So we need a family disaster plan. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Senior Diplomat, the Honorable Mark Brantley, represented St. Kitts and Nevis at the 72nd session of the United Nations General Assembly on Saturday and delivered a stirring address that touched on the realities and fallout of climate change and the need to reconsider the formula that is used by international agencies to determine which countries are eligible for developmental assistance or affordable financing. He also called for all members to commit to working towards creating a sustainable planet. Mr. President, a vital element of sustainable planet is peace. It behooves us all nations great and small to work towards the achievement of this essential universal value. Mr. President, in order to obtain a sustainable planet, our priorities must be synchronized, harmonized, and synergized. Our goal must be preservation and conservation, not only of our natural resources, but also of our human resources. Mr. President, the theme makes a clarion call not only to strive for peace,
but also for a decent life for all. No boy, no girl, no man, no woman, no person should be left behind. We must work together to reduce poverty and hunger, promote justice and equality, and ensure our people have access to healthcare and economic opportunity. Still on the diplomatic scene, St. Kitts and Nevis continues to advance its South-South agenda with the establishment of diplomatic relations with the Lao People's Democratic Republic. After formalizing the agreement, both foreign ministers discussed areas for mutual cooperation in the international arena and also a reciprocal visa exemption agreement between the two countries. Meanwhile, such an agreement was achieved between St. Kitts and Nevis and the Republic of Indonesia. The reciprocal waiver of visa requirements for holders of diplomatic and service or official passports was described as a critical move in the people-to-people -people diplomacy, which is a component of the Federation's strategy to expand its diplomatic footprint. Government's efforts to provide housing to citizens continued this week with a significant gesture. 80-year-old Glendora Baby Daniel was presented with the keys to her new home in Lower Hermitage, Kayon, on Thursday by Valentine Lindsay, the chairman of the board of directors for the National Housing Cooperation. Minister of Human Settlement, the Honorable Eugene Hamilton, said Miss Daniel qualified for the home given her 47 years of service in the sugar industry and the poor conditions of her previous residence. I'm not sure if you have seen the photograph or the picture of where she was living. But if you see that, you will recognize it was important for the Team Unity Administration to do something for Glendora Daniel. This property is an NHC property. So are a few more around the country, owned by NHC, which is not being passed on from family to family. That is important for you to understand. It houses persons like Glendoria until they are passed on and it will then be transferred to someone else who find themselves in a position like Glendoria. It is often said that education is the key to success and the St. Christopher and Nevis Social Security Board is playing its part as it helps students to pursue their academic goals. On Thursday, eight students, one from each of the public high schools in the Federation, received support under the Susanna Lee Scholarship Award Program. The students were Tifara Brown of the Charles E. Mills Secondary School, Princess Simon of the Washington Archibald High School, Rayana Warner of the Bastia High School, Rikesia Salters of the Kayon High School, Kermal Stevens of the Sadler Secondary School, Joshonia Edwards of the Virchiles High School, Tiana Williams of the Charleston Secondary School, and Devery Lewis of the Gingerland Secondary School. So this scholarship which you're receiving today, students, removes the obstacle of some of the unmet needs in your education. And it is to ensure that you have that necessary support to take advantage of every opportunity to gain a good education. It is my firm belief that students showing promise deserve to be supported and deserve to be given every encouragement to succeed and to excel. Honorable Van Semery is the minister responsible for social security. And finally, on Thursday, the Ministry of Tourism launched a new website that promises to be even more innovative and technology friendly. The new site is designed for all devices, but developers were sure to make it friendly for mobile phones. Minister of Tourism, Honorable Lindsay Grant, added that it boasts strong, large images and engaging content. Stakeholders with content on the new website will also be able to log in with a customized account and update their content personally to promote their business. That's all for this week's edition of the SKNS Week in Review. I'm Ian Richards.